What's up guys, in this video what I wanna do is handle an easy problem as well as a hard problem for graphing a logarithmic function. So the main thing we need to understand though is what exactly does a logarithmic function look like? So therefore we can go ahead and simply graph it. So if I was gonna draw a nice little x and y axis here, the main thing I want you to understand that you know the logarithm doesn't really matter what the base is, the graph is gonna cross at one comma zero, and it's gonna look something like this. Now there is going to be this nice little also vertical asymptote. So that is gonna be a logarithmic function, and we can just call this like y equals, you know, log base b of x. It doesn't really matter what the base is. Obviously, whatever the base is, is going to impact the shape of the graph, right? That is gonna stretch and compress the graph. When I'm working with my students on graphing, I'm not so much really concerned about like how much stretched or compressed the graph is. You can see my graphing is not even that precise. When we want precise graphs, typically we're gonna be using graphing technology. But I wanna make sure I focus on with my students is that they know how to graph a logarithmic function by applying the transformations. So let's go and take a look at graphing this easy function to be able to see, well, what are the transformations of this function and how do we graph it? So the main thing is we really only have two transformations. We have a, actually a horizontal transformation and we have a vertical transformation. Remember the base two is not actually a transformation. That is going to be impacting like the stretch and compression of the graph, but it's actually not a transformation. So what exactly is this horizontal transformation? A lot of times students will get tricked up when they go ahead and look at a X minus one and they'll think it's going to be a horizontal transformation by by shifting actually one unit to the right. But it's actually the opposite when you're dealing with something inside of the function. So in this case, x minus one is actually a horizontal shift one unit to the right. So what's important about that, all I'm simply gonna do is take this original paragraph, which is I have this one point right, which is at one comma zero, that's my x-intercept, and I'm just gonna move it over one unit. Now also my vertical asymptote though also has to move. That's one kind of big important thing that I think a lot of students you know kind of forget is that there's a vertical asymptote there. So if you're horizontally shifting your graph, make sure you're also horizontally shifting your vertical asymptote. Now, the next thing is though, my point that I have, two comma zero is not gonna stay there. The graph is also being vertically shifted up three units. So I'm gonna take this point and move it up three more units. So we go one, two, three. That is gonna be my now old x-intercept, but that is gonna be the least the one point that I know, which is gonna be at a, let's see, a two comma three. So I'll write that at two comma three. And now I can simply just kind of retrace the shape of this graph. Now you kind of have an imperfect graph based on the transformations. All right, now let's go and take a look at this hard example. Now, why is this example so hard? Well, basically we have this multiple by negative on the outside, which is actually going to be a reflection about the x-axis. We have another vertical transformation, and now we have a horizontal transformation. But in addition to a horizontal transformation, we actually have a horizontal stretch and compression by multiplying by two. I don't want to get in the weeds here with horizontal and vertical stretch or compressions, because again, when I'm graphing something, I really just want to make sure we can apply the basic transformations, the shifting, the reflecting. I'm not going to be so concerned with how the graph is going to look with the stretches or compressions. You can see here, the base is not even written. Therefore, it's going to be assumed to be a base. 10. Okay, so now that I have my x and y axis, I need to understand, well, which transformation do I do first, right? There's a lot of things that are going on. I think it's kind of important to first kind of understand that we can rewrite this equation by factoring out this two. And that's the main important thing that you really need to do. When you have a horizontal transformation and a horizontal compression, you have to factor out that coefficient. So when I factor out a two, I'm going to be left with an x minus a three halves. Now, why is it going to be a three halves? The reason why it's a three halves is because two does not evenly divide into three. And remember, when you factor something out, you can always multiply it back to check your answer. Two times times x is 2x, good two times a negative three halves is going to be a negative three. Now we have actually a horizontal compression of three halves, which means we're going to go three halves again to the right. We also are reflecting the graph and we are shifting the graph down one. So the first thing I'm going to do, and we actually have a horizontal compression, which is going to kind of skinny up my graph. It's not the same as a vertical stretch, but it's very similar. Let's just kind of go from transformation at a time. Okay. So now we're going to start off here at my X intercept, which is that one comes zero. Now I just need to be able to go ahead and apply my operations here step-by-step. Step. So I'm going to shift the graph over. I have a horizontal shift of one and a half, right? So one and a half. So that's going to be over there. Now, again, if we want to figure out what this is, we started at one and then we added a three half, right? So therefore I can rewrite a one as a two over two plus a three halves, which is going to now give me a five halves. So this coordinate point now is at a five halves. And then what I can do is now apply my vertical shift, which is down going to be a down negative one. So that's going to take me over there. So this is my, my new point. So I'm just doing things step by step. So five halves comma negative one. That is my original X intercept. This one point that I knew has now been shifted over here. I also have my asymptote, my vertical asymptote got shifted over one and a half. So therefore I'm just going to go ahead and graph that there. The big mistake that students will make is they'll say, oh, let's just go ahead and regraph, you know, what we have here. But again, remember what happened is when we multiply by negative that reflected the graph about the Y axis. So when you reflect the graph about the X axis, the graph is now going to take shape of something like this. 
okay? Now, the other thing that also happened here is we have this horizontal compression of two. So you could skinny up the graph a little bit, but my main thing that I wanna focus on with my students is that they can be able to apply a general shape of the graph that is correct with a correct point as well as asymptote. And that is exactly what we did just by applying the transformations. So hopefully this video was helpful for you. If you want more examples on graphing logarithms or the notes that I provide to my students inside of my courses, then go and check out the playlist and resources I have for you down below, or you can check out my next video I have for you here. Cheers.